Epaphras was the one who taught you the gospel, and he is the one who told us of your love in the Spirit. Verse 9. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with his knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. So now Paul is praying for them that they need something. They need to be filled with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Okay, now the word for knowledge there is epinosin. The normal word is just nosin or gnosis. Okay, that's the word for knowledge. Epinosis or epinosin means, well, they're not quite certain what it means. It could mean a fuller knowledge, a deeper knowledge, or it could mean an acknowledgement. It can mean acknowledge, and in places is translated like that. Now, certainly for some of us, and I certainly think about myself, if I was to apply this prayer to me, I don't think um, I would be asking God to fill me with a knowledge of his will, because I pretty much know that <laughs> after all these years. Uh, I would be asking God to fill me with the acknowledgement of his will, putting it into practice, because that's, that's, that's more of a problem, isn't it? And, and the point is, what's the point of knowing more about God's will if you're not going to put it into practice? What's the point of it? What's the point of knowing more and more and more about God's will if you're not going to put it into practice? What does Paul say? Knowledge puffs up. It's love that edifies. It's love that edifies. So it may be here that what Paul is doing for these people is praying not only for them to have a, a deeper knowledge of God's will, but a greater acknowledgement of God's will. I want you to put it into practice, he said. It's a bit similar if you go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, he says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Or is it to acknowledge him better? Could be either way. Could be either way. Maybe it's both. Maybe that's why Paul chose this word, which has this, it's almost like two meanings depending on the context or how you understand it. But yes, he wanted, I'm certain he wanted them to get to know God better, but he also certainly wanted them to acknowledge God more. God, acknowledge God more. So back to our notes, notes then. Why did Paul pray this for these people? And what was this knowledge of his will or the acknowledgement of his will for? What was this spiritual wisdom and understanding for? Well, if you look at Paul's prayers, you will see they're all actually spiritual. So many people today want wisdom and understanding in secular subjects. Lord, help me understand algebra. <laughs> How many times have you heard that prayer? Lord, I don't understand calculus. You know. Well, there's never any promise in the Bible that God will give you understanding of algebra or calculus or anything like this. You know, if you look at Paul's prayers, they're always for spiritual things. Look at this. This is what this spiritual wisdom is for. This is what this understanding is for. This spiritual wisdom and understanding is what for? Verse 10, and we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord greater acknowledgement, that you may please him in every way, greater acknowledgement, that you may bear fruit in every good work, greater acknowledgement, growing in the knowledge, it's the same word again, knowledge or acknowledgement of God. This is what it's for. It's not that we'll be successful in a job down here, that we get an interview, that we pass the interview, that we'll have a pay rise, that we'll get, and so it goes on and on and on. No. All this is basically for our spiritual life. He wants them. Uh, verse 9, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you, asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord, may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. And as we were talking before the meeting, the most important thing in all of this is really 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for. Now, what's the Bible useful for? Well, it's useful for this teaching, 
rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So if you don't know your Bible, you're not, you're not going to be you're not going to be thoroughly equipped. You're not going to be thoroughly trained. You know? When, when we have a new... Oh, when Microsoft brings out another version of Windows or another thing like this, you have to get through it and start working to it and brief yourself on a manual to notice the changes that there's been from the previous issue to this issue and this, that and the other. And usually the new issue is better than the old issue, but it's a bit of a pain until you've got used to it. Huh? We've, we've, you know, this is a manual. And as we go through it, there's changes. And we're going to have to look for those changes and note those changes. So, what does he do? And Paul wanted them to be, in verse 11 now, he wanted them to be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. He wanted them to be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. Now, power, that's what a lot of people want, don't they? They want power. Some of our Christian brothers and sisters want power to heal the sick, to raise the dead, and things like this. They want power for all sorts of things. Well, if you actually have a look in Ephesians chapter 3 sometime, I haven't got time to look at that prayer now, but go and look at the prayer in Ephesians chapter 3. It's a prayer for power, and you will see what that power is for. It's for things like love. That's what it's for. And if you tell me you don't need the Holy Spirit's power to love people, then you must be a great saint. Because <laughs> right? some people, I really do, come on, Lord, help me with this person. You know, yeah. And here it is. Look, what is he, he's asking for power here in, in, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 11, so that you may have great endurance. Keep on running. Keeping up the faith. You know, we can easily get discouraged. We want endurance. Keep going, keep going. We need patience. You need power to have patience when you're trying to deal with some people. You know, you need patience. You need power to joyfully give thanks to the Lord. Because sometimes things get on top of you, don't they? You don't feel joyful. You know, you have disappointments, you have upsets, things don't go right. That's life. But that's life. <laughs> you know, the Bible's full of things not going right for people. I mean, God doesn't hide anything in the Bible. There's, there's nobody in this Bible who had this wonderful life in which nothing ever goes wrong. No. So we need his power. We need his power to have things like endurance and patience and to always be able to give thanks. And what are they joyfully to thank God for? And why thank him? Well, it, it, it tells us very clearly there. Joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. He has qualified us. We have not qualified ourselves. My daughter took five attempts to pass the driving test. Yeah, sounds familiar. <laughs> sounds familiar, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, my son I took, some might, some might took, I don't know, Jonathan, take three or four. Me too. Yeah, he took two, you took four, I took three. You know, we had to qualify ourselves, didn't we? And sometimes it takes time. It takes time. We fail. We fail. We don't fail on this because he has qualified us. He has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints. In the kingdom of light. It's a lovely expression, the kingdom of light, isn't it? I don't think it occurs anywhere else. How did he qualify us? How did he qualify them? Well, it's through Christ's death on the cross. It's simple as that. You know? We have been rescued from the dominion of darkness. We've been brought into the kingdom of the Son he loves. We have redemption. We have the forgiveness of sins. Therefore, we are qualified. Because basically, to enter God's presence, you have to be holy. You have to be redeemed from sin, death, and Satan. Christ has done it. He's qualified it. Because there's a price to pay if you sin, and that's death. So it's either your death or Christ's death. Christ has given your, his death for us. And so he has qualified us. He has qualified us. And therefore we should joyfully give thanks to God for him. Joyfully give thanks to God because we have been qualified to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. And this kingdom of the Son he loves, a very unique expression. 
Now be very careful sometimes with terminology. Because some people talk about the kingdom and the church, be very careful about that terminology. By the kingdom they're talking about God's purposes with Israel, and by the church they mean God's purpose with the Gentiles today. That, that's going to hang you. That terminology is going to hang you. Israel was known as a church in the wilderness. You have lots of churches in the book of Acts. You have kingdoms here. Kingdom of God is mentioned in Colossians. Kingdom of light. Kingdom of the son of his love. Be very careful with your terminology. I don't use that terminology because it doesn't fit the scriptures. I have to go into long explanations if I start to use that terminology. We are part of a kingdom, you know. We are part of a kingdom. He is king of kings. He's not just king of Israel. He's king of kings. He is our king. And he, we are part of the kingdom of light. And we are part of the kingdom of the son he loves. That's it. I mean, we are parts of kingdoms. You know, and I do. Sometimes some people get very upset at what they call kingdom theology. These people are talking about kingdoms. And I don't really get upset by that because I'm part of a kingdom. Now, if people think this world we are living in now is the kingdom of God, hang on a moment. <laughs> I have problems with that. If this is God's kingdom, I'm not really very enamored with his kingdom, sorry. But Christians are part of the kingdom. No, we are part of the kingdom of light. We are part of the kingdom of the sunny love. But that's just Christians. That's not people who are not Christians. They're not part of the kingdom. They don't have him as a king. They don't know he's a Lord. He's not their head. He's not their saviour. They're not part of his kingdom. We would like them to be part of that kingdom, but then that's our duty then to, for us to do what Epaphras did, which was take the gospel to them. Epaphras took the gospel. This Jew had gone up to Jerusalem, probably got saved, went back home and told the people about Jesus Christ. And those people believed. Those people believe so much so that when Epaphras ended up in prison with Paul, he could tell them about their great faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and their love for all the saints. So shall we bow our heads, friends? Our God, our Father, we thank you for this letter that Paul wrote to the Colossians. And we thank you for Epaphras and this man that we know practically nothing about and the great work he did there in the Lycus Valley amongst those churches of Colossi, Hierapolis, and Laodicea. We thank you for him. We thank you for the great l faith that those people had and their great love for other Christians. And we would just ask that you would help us also have that great faith and that great love for each other. And for other Christians who perhaps don't share all the views that we have, it doesn't really matter. If they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they are one with us. And we, we uh, need perhaps to explain to them a bit better some of the ways in which we understand scriptures. So, Father, we also recognize that we also need this prayer to be strengthened with power in his glorious might. And also, we need this prayer for spiritual wisdom and understanding to help us live better lives worthy of our Lord, to help us please him more every way and in every day, and to help us bear more good work, bear more fruit to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Mike.